Welcome to Three Crosses Farrier Company. I'm Caleb and we're gonna be trimming this horse today. This is a two-part video series. We're gonna do the fronts in this video and the backs in the next video. Right off the bat, you can see that this horse is way overdue for a trim. His hooves are literally not even touching the ground except in the back where the heel is. That's because the heel has come so far forward that he's actually walking on his heel. He's not walking on the rest of his foot. And you can see right here, that heel has moved forward to almost even with where the bars are. So the termination of the bars is usually a pretty good indication of the center of articulation. And in this case, you can see that the heels are almost to that center of articulation. They're almost to the widest part of this hoof. The Frog is way overgrown. Um, there's just a ton wrong right here. Unfortunately, I see these every so often. They're usually purely neglect. It's usually not the person that neglected the horse that brings it to me. It's usually the person that's picking up the pieces after the horse was neglected. So an elderly family member. Um, I've had cases where uh, someone died and no one thought to look at the horse and it finally got so bad that other family members took it upon themselves to bring the horse to me. I've also had it where the horse was repossessed, went somewhere, they sold him to a family they thought was good. I've had it where the horse was bought at the sales yard, somebody just dropped him off and didn't care. And then on a rare occasions, not in this particular case, but on rare occasions, I've actually been called out by the sheriff's department to work on a horse. Um, that was several years ago that I did that. There's just no excuse. You, you should not let your horse get to this point. It's, uh, I don't think people understand how much discomfort and pain that, that letting a horse get to this point causes. All those tendons and ligaments and muscles are tight and then some are loose because the hoof isn't where it's supposed to be. And then if you can imagine, this horse was walking like that for months. This isn't, this isn't something new. This isn't like, oh my God, I woke up one day and my horse is super long. It's like this, this took months, if not a year to get to this point. And it's kind of, it's unfortunate because this is a very young horse. He's actually not a bad looking little horse. He's, I think they said he was six years old. So he has a lot of life in him. He's super green. You'll hear him snorting in the back of the video. He hasn't had his feet handled much. I kind of had to do what he would let me do because he didn't have a lot of patience. I didn't have any sedation on this particular day. I was out. Uh, I just did what I could because he didn't have a lot of patience. I've edited out some of the the moving around he did so we get just the, the trimming. I mean, he did fairly good for being green. He's actually standing really good. The, the guy that brought him to me didn't know if he'd stand or not. Now, normally I don't nip like that. I, I don't 45 that toe with my nippers but in this case he has so much extra hoof we've got to get it out of the way as quick as we can and then we'll go in with a rasp and fine tune it but there's a ton of hoof here to come out you're going to notice that i didn't touch the sole very much and that's because i suspected founder the way that his hoof looked and then the minute i touched that toe you can see that that white line is inflamed it's it's very wide that that uh the the white line right there is really inflamed and so i i kind of wondered if he wasn't foundered in fact i talked to this guy about possibly getting some x-rays um they wanted to start riding him and the only way that you're going to be able to ride this horse would be to probably put some shoes on him he was walking 10 times better, but you can see, look at, look at how much of that foot I'm just cutting away. Now there's a possibility that just by stretching the way that his hoof was that, that, that caused that stretching right there in the toe. Um, 
but it's really cheap to take hoof wall off. It's super expensive to put it back on. And when this video was taken, it's been about a month since I did this horse, maybe a little more. Um, it was right in the middle of winter. We were literally getting snow. Uh, I think a week after this, we had sub-zero temperatures for a week and a half. I don't want to cut him short and then have him go out in the pasture and then abscess because he bruises and not be able to walk for three weeks. So I was a little conservative on this particular trim, not to mention that he was, he was kind of, he was a little leery about having his feet done. What I'm trying to do here is again, I normally don't do this, but there was a ton of hoof there to come off. All that hoof needs to go away. It's all distorted. I've gotten so many comments in mostly on Instagram, some in my TikTok, but about the fact about rasping the outside of the foot and weakening the hoof wall and several other things. This isn't weakening the hoof wall. We're getting rid of distortion. That hoof wall isn't strong anyway. That hoof wall is contributing to the detriment of this horse. It's sticking out there like that is causing him to put more wear and tear on his tendons, ligaments, muscles, everything's getting more wear and tear. So we have to bring that foot back to where it's supposed to be and get that, get that toe. And you can see the dish in the toe that needs addressed. You can't just let him walk around like this. Again, you can see here, he, he was losing patience at this point. He was snorting the whole time during this video. And you can hear me talking to the guy that brought the horse to me and I'm trying to educate him. And one of the things we do as farriers is try to educate our clients. One of the most underappreciated and undertaught things is hoof care. A lot of people will have their horse on all kinds of supplements, specialty feed, uh, best hay they can buy. They'll have a saddle that's been properly fitted for their horse that they spent thousands of dollars on. They'll have the bit that their horse absolutely loves that costs $200. They'll have the bridle, they'll have the boots, the blanket, they'll have all the gear and they'll forget the hoof. And unfortunately, if the horse doesn't have a hoof, he, he, he can't do anything. He can't do his job. He can't walk. So I think, I think there's a lot of misinformation. I hate using that word, but there's a lot of misinformation in, in the farrier world and in the horse world at large about hoof care. Horses like this are the exception to the rule. There are many horses out there that, that when properly taken care of and done on a schedule, you don't take a ton of hoof wall off because they're done regularly and that distortion has been addressed a little at a time. These are the unusual cases where that distortion hasn't been addressed and there's a ton of distortion. Again, I'm fairly certain that this horse is foundered. Just looking at the toe, looking at the way the hoof is, I would bet money that he's foundered. And I could be wrong, and I recommended to this gentleman that we take him in for x-rays to see if there was any rotation. The other foot wasn't quite as bad. He, you can see he broke off the medial toe quarter, the medial running into the toe, medial toe quarter right there. Just look at how distorted that foot is though. Look at the bars, they're literally folded over. Look at the heels, they've moved forward probably two to three inches. And this is this just makes me sad. I mean, this is this is not ideal. This is not what I want to do. It's amazing when I get to do these because I get to make them feel better and they feel so much better. But this isn't the goal. The goal is to have this horse on a six week cycle. Seven at the most, but six weeks. 
and so that he doesn't have to go through pain. One of the things that happens when a horse grows like this, it's, it's a good example. So horses in the wild wear down their feet because they move more. But that doesn't mean that they don't have hoof pathologies and that those hoof pathologies don't get worse. So in captivity, what we do as farriers is try to manage those pathologies and those deviations in their conformation. So if a horse is pigeon toed, we try to shoe him in such a way that we manage that pigeon toe so that we keep the flare out and keep him as, as level as we can so that he has a longer life. A horse in the wild, if he's pigeon toed, becomes more and more pigeon toe and eventually it will shorten his life. It'll slow him down. It'll cause arthritis. It'll cause a quarter crack. There's all kinds of things that will happen if the hoof isn't managed. Uh, there was a study done out of Australia, I believe, in which they were putting down a bunch of brombies. That's our version of Mustangs for Australians. And one of the farriers over there just did a research study and started looking at the horses that they put down and looking at the legs and looking at the bones. And he came to the conclusion and his research showed that on average, wild horses have about the same number of pathologies as horses in captivity. So as horse owners, again, this is kind of a misunderstood, misrepresented, not taught. We're not just trimming the foot. We're not just taking length off. We're looking at the balance of the foot. We're looking at the health of the foot. We're looking at the frog. We're looking at the toe. Is the toe getting too long or is the toe getting too short? Some horses drag their toe and wear them off. So as farriers, we're not just there to take a bunch of hoof off. We're actually there to help that horse have a longer career. And I think this is something that's not taught in the horse community at large. I would recommend if, if anyone on here is listening, there are farrier competitions around the country in the US and Europe where farriers come together, they learn to forge and they compete in forging in these classes. There's clinics put on, usually they have a competition, a clinic um, on, the, on the same day or same, you know, however long the, the, the clinic lasts. And you can go watch some of the best guys in your area work on horses and see what they're doing and see what they're learning. And you might not, if you're not a farrier, you not, might not pick it up. Some of it might be a little boring, but it'll give you an idea what it takes to do this job and how much work it really is and what we're shooting for. Again, addressing as much distortion as I can here there's just so much dish. You can see it all the way around the foot that's just dished out. Rasping is the hardest part of this job, in my opinion. I can, I, everything else is fairly easy. What I pointed to right there is he has a rather large abscess, that, that line running parallel to the ground is an old abscess. He was really running out of patience. He was trying really hard. He was a good boy. Believe it or not, so when we started, it was hard for him. The first foot I did, he did not want to stand on the other one because it was so long. I did the worst of the two feet first and then went to the other foot that was bad, but it was slightly better than the other foot. So this one was the slightly better foot, and he didn't want to stand on after I got his foot cleaned up, he didn't want to stand on the, the slightly better foot anymore. He wanted to stay on, on the foot I just trimmed. I'm actually running some new knives. I, I should talk about that a little bit. I'm, I'm in love with these new knives. They're called a Salcedo. Uh, and they are amazing. I'm, they're sharp. They stay sharp. They've got a good blade. I'm, I'm impressed with them. They're awesome. Um, and then I have my new shafts by Badger Built. Um, 
hopefully we're going to have a little collab collaboration coming out. The other thing that I'm thinking I want to do, and let me know in the comments what you all think of this, but I'm thinking about putting out some five minute videos of these videos without me talking. So the ones that I can, I don't have to mute because of clients confidentiality or anything like that. I want to, uh, um, put them out in an ASMR platform for those people that just love the ASMR. Those feet look better, but there's still a lot of foot to come off. And like I said, I really would have liked to take more than I did. I mean, those are better, but there's so much more to come off. I think it's going to take two or three appointments to really get this, this guy dialed in. Well, that should about do it for today. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Let us know what you think in the comments and we'll catch you next time.